Forbidden History of Armenia and Azerbaijan. They have the old qualities of dogs, except the loyalty. This story was hushed up for many years. We will try to be objective. Documents and archival materials can help to find the truth. Armenia is a small country located to the south of Caucasus mountain ridge, washed by Caspian Sea on the eastern and by Black Sea to the western side. The history of the establishment of this country raises quite a lot of questions. I found out that in Armenia, 98 of the population are Armenians, so this is very much mono-ethnic country, which is quite rare. Have you ever asked yourself why Armenia is mono-ethnic? No, I haven't, but I found an answer for myself. Maybe it is wrong. The reason is that Tsarist Russia was confident in the loyalty of Armenians to the emperor. So, there was no reason to populate Armenia with other nationalities, so they would always be the stronghold for the Russian army. Popular Russian TV presenter Vladimir Pozner had a question regarding the reasons of monoethnicity of Armenia. The answer of the president Serge Sarkisyan, as he supposed, does not have any connection with reality. Version of the Armenian head of state about the decision of the emperor not to populate Armenia with other nationalities contradicts the very history of this country. Armenians itself settled on the territory of present-day Armenia. However, historical Armenia was located in another region. But we will speak about it later. We offer you an alternative version of the development. Предлагаем вашему вниманию альтернативную версию развития исторических событий. Регион, в котором расположена современная Армения, является одним из самых сложных политических регионов на Земле. The region in which modern-day Armenia is located is one of the most complex political regions in the world. Here, even neighboring villages speak different language. This is a result of natural evolutionary processes, since the trade routes for many centuries passed the region. Both were the subject of numerous migration processes, and the situation of mono-ethnic Armenia in the region is an extraordinary fact. The mono-ethnicity of, let's say, Iceland or Japan is the result of natural evolutionary processes, since they are washed by water from all four sides. Mono-ethnicity of Armenia, which is surrounded by polyethnic Georgia, Azerbaijan, Turkey and Iran, is clearly extraordinary fact. Its mono-ethnicity is the result of planned to century policy of genocide and ethnic cleansing. Not worse, not only Azerbaijanis, but also Russians were expelled. You probably should know that in 1991, most of our Russians were expelled from Armenia. Today, this is the most mono-ethnic republic. Russians and representatives of other nations are presented everywhere, but this is not the case of Armenia. The head of the largest media holding of Russia, Dmitry Kisilev, during the meeting with the Armenian political elite, say that in Yerevan there are no Russian schools left, and the Russian language is disappearing in Armenia. This means that Russian culture is disappearing, and with it the ties with Russia. Even experts of the Council of Europe openly accuse the Armenian authorities in discrimination of Russians. These are the realities of the so-called loyalty of Armenians to Russia, which President Sarkisyan has mentioned. Such a historiography that is presented within this mono-ethnic Armenia contradicts with the historiography of the surrounding countries, as well as the historiography of the whole world. Of course, the Armenian people are presented with a completely different story, serving only these processes in Armenian way. We, the creators of this film, are sure that the Armenian public has the right to know the truth, and that's why we decided to create this film, in order to show 
show the Armenian public an alternative history which it has to, the right to know. So, what's the reason of monoethnicity of Armenia, which is located in such an ethnically diverse region? To understand this, we will go back to 200 years, when Tsarist Russia was just about to conquer the Caucasus. Map of the Caucasus region 1799. In this region soon will occur the processes that will radically change the entire course of history of in the Caucasus. In front of you is a painting of Franz Robot, surrender of the Erevan Fortress, October 1, 1827, from the memories of Decembrist Yevdokim Lachin, who took part in the assault of the Erevan Fortress in 1827. General Krasovsky approaches the gates of the first wall and orders to open them. Division of our auditor speaks the Tatar language, saying to the defenders not to be afraid and calls them to obey. At that time, Russians called local Azerbaijani residents in Caucasus and in Erevan as Tatars. Majestic Erevan Fortress, located on the rocks at the bank of the river Zangi, Erevan was called as the city of minarets. There were nine mosques, more than 800 households, caravansarais, bazaar square. The Hanate was ruled by Hussein Guluhan. Erevan possesses strategic importance for the advancing Russian interests in the Caucasus. Since 1804, for 23 years, Russian troops unsuccessfully tried to take the Erevan fortress, and finally, during the reign of Emperor Nicholas I, a large military expedition of 12,000 army equipped with powerful long-range guns was formed. On October 1827, after a grueling assault faced with the desperate resistance from the besieged, Russian troops under the command of the General Paskevich managed to seize the fortress. In 1828, when the Turkmenchai Peace Treaty was signed, the Hanates of the northern Azerbaijan, including the Erevan Hanate, were annexed by the Russian Empire. Armenian Catholicos persuaded Paskevich that as soon as the Erevan and Nakhchivan Hanates will be occupied by our troops, thousands of Armenians from Persia, Turkey and even India, with all acquired riches, will immediately settle on these lands. Thus, at the beginning of the 19th century, a mass resettlement of Armenians to the South Caucasus began. Even after the resettlement, the Russian general Ivan Fedorovich Paskevich stated that Tatars consisted two-thirds of the population of that province. 100 years since that, there will be already over a million of Armenian settlers, which will radically change the ethnic map of the region. Unlike the surrounding countries, there is no Azerbaijani population in Armenia. Unlike the surrounding countries, there is no Azerbaijani architecture in Armenia. Unlike the surrounding countries, there are no Azerbaijani place names in Armenia. Finally, unlike the surrounding countries, there are no Albanian churches and Albanian architecture in Armenia. All of them were Armenianized and are called as Armenians. Let's pay attention to how the territories of present-day Armenia before and after their mass resettlement by Armenia looked like. Before the mass resettlement of Armenians, there were hundreds of mosques and many other monuments of Azerbaijani culture on the territory of present-day Armenia. (music) 
after the resettlement of the process of its demolishing has started. As a result, today there is not a single Azerbaijani Muslim culture monument in Armenia. Right after the resettlement of Armenians, the process of annihilation and expel of the Azerbaijanis has started. As a result, today in Armenia, unlike neighboring countries, there is not a single Azerbaijani remained. Before the resettlement of Armenians, almost all toponyms were of Azerbaijani origin. After the resettlement of Armenians, the process of changing of toponyms to Armenian place names began. As a result, today in Armenia, of the many thousands of Azerbaijani place names, only several has remained. Before the resettlement of Armenians, there were many Christian Albanian churches and monasteries as well as other cultural and architectural monuments. After the resettlement of Armenians, all of them were transferred to the Armenian church which declared them as a part of its spiritual heritage. At the same time, everything that did not undergo changes was destroyed. These are historical lands of Azerbaijan. Hundreds of toponyms and more than 2,000 Azerbaijani villages. And what has happened to the territory of the Ervin Hanid after it was settled by Armenians from Turkey, Iran and the Middle East? Lake Goycha is now called Lake Sivan. The river Zangi is now called Razdan. The city of Erevan became Yerevan. Year after year, forced expulsion of Azerbaijan from their lands was carried out. All this eventually led to the complete destruction of the medieval Azerbaijani heritage, to the mass extermination of the entire indigenous population in the territory where the Republic of Armenia was created. The Erevan Fortress, the treasure of the Azerbaijani architecture that stood for several centuries, was fully demolished. The memory, the traces of the civilization were destroyed. Centuries-long history was rewritten by the pro-Armenian historians. All this done with one aim to show that there was nothing but Armenian people, its culture and history on these territories. One of the last propaganda films about the history of Armenia and Azerbaijan, filmed by the Order of the Minister of Culture of Armenia and the Mayor's Office of Yerevan, one of the main contrived postulates is formulated. There is no such unit as Azerbaijan north of the river Arax, north of the Iranian Azerbaijan. Such a historical unit has never existed. This area is called Aran, and in all sources we find this area under the name of Aran. Azerbaijan is located in the lowlands of Arax. The territory to the north of Arax was called Shirvan and Dagestan and not as Azerbaijan. So, the creators of this Armenian film choose three of our contemporaries who in a tone that does not tolerate objection talk about the history of centuries. We also decided to pick three characters, but historical ones, the contemporaries of those times that were discussed by historians in Armenian film. Our characters are Russian emperors, who did not talk about history, but created the history. They knew exactly what land did they conquer and what documents were signed by other states. So, what lands did Russia annex? Archival documents will help to clarify this issue as well. There are so many of them that will not be enough for one film, so we choose several of them.
At the beginning of the 18th century, the Russian autocrat Peter I, as a part of his project to get Russia to the warm seas, makes the Caspian campaign in order to capture strategically important region of the Caucasus. But here he faced a serious adversary, the Ottoman Turkey. In 1724, in Constantinople, a treaty was signed between the great empires of Russia and Turkey regarding the division of Iranian possessions, namely Azerbaijan. In a treaty sealed with the signatures of the res Russian resident Nipluyev and the Ottoman vizier Ibrahim Pasha, it is said the following. The Azerbaijani provinces with all its dependencies and territories, and all the cities and populated places of the Erevan province should be under the rule of the Sublime Porta. We have presented the Russian version of this treatise, but since this is a bilateral document, we went to Istanbul to the state archive. Here, we were first shown the Ottoman text of the treaty. In the Turkish version, it is called Istanbul Treaty of 1724. This is the original version of the treatise. It is kept among the Ottoman medieval documents and has not been shown to anyone until now. And for the first time this document was presented to our film crew. This was the first peace treaty between Turkey and Russia. On June 23, 1724, the ambassador of France in Istanbul, Marquis de Bonnac, realizing the inevitability of war between Russia and the Ottoman Turkey, mediated in the signing of the Istanbul Treaty, dividing the territories of the Iranian Empire. According to this treaty, mostly of the lands of Azerbaijan were divided. From these territories in the South Caucasus, the lands of Erevan, Kancha, Karabakh, Dakhchevan, and other regions, as well as the lands of Southern Azerbaijan, were passed to the Ottoman Empire. And Russia possessed the Caspian territories of Azerbaijan, as well as Gilan and Mazandaran. Archival data does not leave any space for doubts. Russia annexed in the South Caucasus not the mystical ancient Armenian lands, but Azerbaijan. Emperor Peter I and the Ottoman Sultan Ahmed III certainly had a clear idea of what land they conquered and divided. On these lands there was an established Azerbaijani statehood. The rulers of these Hanates minted their coins. Hanates had a special territory, language, army, system of the state administration and independent foreign policy. All these Hanids obeyed the single ruler of Azerbaijan. One of the capitals of these Hanids was Erevan. Armenian side deliberately does not mention an Azerbaijan in the Caucasus north of the river Aras in order to prove that Armenia was supposedly here since ancient times and only Armenians lived here. We will turn again to the documents and the history will judge. In Russia, in 1724, during the reign of the Peter II, the treaty between the Russian and the Ottoman empires was ratified. There, where Arak's confluence is the Kura, should be the exactly the transcendence of Russian, Turkish and Persian possessions. Turkish borders captures all the space between the crust of Arax and Kura, it is all Azerbaijan. And in this document, the territory between Arax and Kura is defined as Azerbaijan, it is Azerbaijan. Of course, Russian emperors and diplomats wrote the name of Azerbaijan in different way as it is used to be written now, but for sure it should be impossible to confuse it with Armenia. In 1799, 
a fragment from the decree of the Russian Emperor Paul I. In Azerbaijan, the region neighboring Ottoman Porta, which had the possession controlled by special hands of Ganja, Erevan, Khoi, Karabakh, Tabriz, and others. As you can see, in this decree it is noted that Azerbaijan is an independent political unit and it also includes the Karabakh, Ganja, Erevan, and other Hanids. So, three Russian emperors, Peter I, Peter II, and Paul I, unambiguously described the lands of Azerbaijan in the Caucasus as the lands to the north of the river Aras and talk about the independence of Azerbaijani rulers. In Tiflis in 1786, Russian diplomat Stepan Burnashov was the representative of Russia at the court of the Georgian, Georgian king Irakli II. Burnashov traveled the region and wrote a couple of works, including about the Azerbaijani lands in the Caucasus north of the river Arax. In a chapter titled Division of Possession of the Azerbaijan Lands, Burnashov describes the Hanids and the cities of Azerbaijan to the current position of those lands which are taken for granted under the name of Azerbaijan. Since Georgia is adjacent to the north, it is the kingdoms of Kahiti and Kartli. Stepan Bornashov especially notes the independence of some Azerbaijani Khans. Azerbaijan landowners and land possessors should be considered as powerful and independent. Later, Stepan Bornashov consistently lists the Azerbaijani Khanates north to the river Arax. The Western states are concerned regarding the progress of Russia in the Caucasus and closely monitored and recorded the situation in the region. This is an English map of 1835. As you can see, even here the territory of Azerbaijan includes even the territory of the current Armenia. This one is the American map published in Boston at the same period. It also indicates the territory of Azerbaijan in the Caucasus. It means that at the beginning of the 19th century, sources and the leading powers of Russia, Great Britain and the United States recorded ter territories of Azerbaijan in the Caucasus north of the river Aras. In 1864, English consul in Tabriz, Kit Abbott, in the Memorandum for the Royal Geographical Society of Great Britain, informs about Azerbaijan. The country known as Azerbaijan is divided between Iran and Russia. Russia possessing a part of Azerbaijan's territory of about 80,000 square miles, equal to the area of the Great Britain. Kit Abbott describes the Azerbaijan lands that have been ceded to Russia. Russian part is bordered to the north and northeast by mountains of the Caucasus, which stretching to the outskirts of Baku on the Caspian Sea, and to the south the borders are marked by the river Arax, through the Muham steppe to the province of Talish and river Astara, which flows through the re this region into the Caspian Sea. This region also includes Mohammedan countries of Erevan, Nachevan, Karabakh, Ganja, Shirvan, Shamakhi, Baku, Guba, Salyan, and part of Talish. From the memorandum of the English diplomat, we can see that the lands of Azerbaijan covered vast territories in the Caucasus much north of the river Aras. Moreover, Russian, British and American maps show that the geographical concept of Armenia practically did not belong to the territories north of the river Arax, because historical Armenia was located in Asia Minor and not in the Caucasus. After the mass resettlement of the Caucasus and creation of the Armenian statehood here in the 20th century, a wrong perception was formed that these are the lands of historical Armenia.
так утверждение современных армянских деятелей о том, что не арабский so, Арабский 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 Today, Armenia is a mono-ethnic country. For around 200 years, ethnic cleansing and deportation of the represent representatives of other nations, first of all Azerbaijanis, were carried out deliberately and in planned manner. No indigenous people, no trouble. In Turkey, who allegedly committed genocide against the Armenian people, as it is said in Armenia, 10,000 Armenians are living in this country. In Azerbaijan, whose lands are held under occupation, 30,000 of Armenians living only in Baku. In tolerant Armenia, there is not a single Turk, not a single Azerbaijani living. Practically, there is only one nation living there, ethnic Armenians. And this nation is imposed, so to speak, ethnic purely history of Armenia, and alternative studies of foreign scientists does not allow to interfere. And if these scientists are of Armenian origin, then propaganda calls them as enemies of the nation. Armenian scientist of Armenian origin, Robert Hewson recalls, I was trying to get convinced in Yerevan, sometimes even with a little impatience, that we in the West should not bother ourselves to conduct research and better serve Armenia if we will only republish in other languages the works that has been developed by the Academy of Science of Armenia. Within the framework of our projects of informational support to the Armenian public, we offer it an alternative history, and in further episodes of our film, we will reveal the true meaning of the main postulates imposed on the Armenian people, on which all historiography of Armenia is standing on clay feet. The Armenian viewers have right to make a choice, either to adhere to the guidelines of official historiography or pay attention to the alternative information. Vatan TV thanks the author of the film, Fada Hundov, as well as Center of Public and Political Studies, Caucasus History Center Public Union, and Azad Azerbaijan TV and Radio Broadcast Company.